Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ailsa Proverbs. I'm the founder and managing director of the Big Cheese Making Kit. Uh, the Big Cheese Making Kit is a simple kit. I've got one here. Um, that allows you to make your own cheese at home in around an hour. Um, there's just some really simple ingredients in here. So it's uh, salt, citric acid, rennet, um, muslin, a thermometer. Um, and each of the kits makes around 10 to 12 batches of cheese. And it's about two pounds of cheese per kit. So you've got lots of cheese from one kit. So this is the product. So you know what I'm talking about. You can come and have a look at it in a wee minute if you like. Um, so I launched the Big Cheese Making Kit in September 2012 um, and that was just from my home in East Lothian. Um, I was making the kits with the help of some people in my spare bedroom. Um, we had the predicted sales of around 400 um, from September to the new year um, and the actual sales were about 4,000. So it was fair to say there was chaos in my house at that time um, and we quickly realised that we had to outsource manufacturing somewhere else. So the business has grown really rapidly in the last two and a half years. Um, last year, we tripled our sales to UK retailers, selling around 65,000 kits to date. So what took us um, into international markets? Um, we've received inquiries from overseas since, we're, since we launched the business, and that was mostly from trade shows such as this. We quickly really realized that the UK market, although very successful for us, would ultimately level off um, and the only further opportunities would be overseas. Also, if I ever came to sell the business, um, a buyer would want to see that there were opportunities for, business, for the business to grow outside the UK. We're currently selling in South Africa, Denmark, Holland, Germany, and South Korea. So how did we research our markets? Um, well, last year we decided to take the step of employing a full-time international business manager um, whose primary role was to research these markets um, and to find out which ones would be mo most viable for the product. Um, as up until now, we'd only really reacted to inquiries that we were getting. So we started with a long list of countries and narrowed it down in terms of consumption of cheese per head of population. So it was important that they liked cheese. Um, and also available disposable income um, because it's a, a gift item predominantly that it was important that people had the money to be able to buy one. Also the availability of good milk. Um, so we were looking for pasteurized milk, not ultra pasteurized. It's getting a little bit technical, but the, basically the quality of the milk had to be at a reasonable standard. Um, and with the help of UKTI, we gathered this information then created a short list of countries to target. We went directly to the UKTI offices in the country on our list um, and gave them a list of questions that we wanted answered. They gathered up all the, the data and sent it back to us. Um, and this was really invaluable help because it was great to get information from people who were actually in those countries rather than just desk work, which we'd been doing and really just guessing um, up until that point. So it was also important for us to make sure that the concept of cheese was something that would go down with cheese making. Um, it's something that would go down in those markets. So we also sent um, kits over there to be trialled. The largest opportunity for us was a German market. Um, and that's where we decided to focus. Um, and that was really due to the, the research findings. Um, also, sort of EU regulations in terms of what we can and can't sell as a food product. Um, and geographic location as well. So in terms of the cost of shipping. So what problems did we encounter? Um, well, we used a professional translation service to translate our instructions, guides, and sleeves. And this is into German, this is one of the German kits. Um, however, this still resulted in a quite serious typo, <laughs> uh, which was tablespoons instead of teaspoons. Um, and that's quite a big error in terms of cheese making. Um, and this error was only noticed by a retailer once we had sold the product into their shop. Um, so <laughs> that wasn't great. Uh, we also encountered issues in terms of distribution. So being based in Scotland and not Germany, um, it was difficult to know the best route to take. So did we use sales agents via distributors? Um, we didn't really have any knowledge of the local markets in terms of local retailers and who we should be targeting. We also paid a fee to an international sales agent and that resulted in absolutely no sales and now we can't get them on the phone. So <laughs> we're still trying to get our money back on that one, but that's another problem that we encountered. 
Um, we also had quite a substantial order from South Korea, um, and that was great until we realised that the term organic couldn't be used on any products being shipped to South Korea. Um, and our products do have organic on the labels and organic on the sleeves, and this was only something that was noticed quite near the end of that sort of sales or ordering process, which meant that we had to over-sticker a lot of the, the information that was in there, um, which resulted in quite an unattractive product. Um, we're still working on that opportunity at the moment, so there are, um, we'll go back and sort of recreate a South Korean um, kit for, for that market. So what have we learnt um, and what is the way forward for the big cheese making kit? Um, well, we've learnt that there are big opportunities overseas, but really the process is not a fast one um, and you really do have to take your time um, and look at the markets very thoroughly. Um, having a short list of potential countries um, and putting your resources into those rather than a scattergun approach is also really vital. Um, just making sure that everything is right in terms of one product for one country. Um, and as I said, for us, the UK market will start to level off. There's definitely a finite number of retailers for us in the UK who want the product. So um, international is really the only way to go for us. Um, and our final lesson that we've learned is that good proofreading is definitely worth its weight in gold. 